Many 1-0 up, and it's a Shen ban once again from Schalke Nullfear. And Elise out of Misfits, which means we're likely going Lulu next from Schalke, if they're sticking to the same thing. I think Lulu Lex is making himself comfortable. <laughs> Lulu Whoa, makes a okay. lot of sense. It's going to be a Graves ban here from Schalke, so I feel this is perhaps them pushing those junglers down the tier priority. It, what they're doing here is telling Misfits they have to ban Rengar. This Graves is banned because they don't want Misfits playing Graves into Rengar. Schalke will likely still ban Lulu. And if Misfits Academy don't, Ban out junglers here. Schalke gets something comfortable. Now, the Ivan has been played by Lulex, but also Ivan has been nerfed. I don't think this is as key a ban as something like a Gragas is. I would Ooh. agree with you. Rengar ban actually coming out from Schalke themselves, so really respecting huh. Price Stalker there. And we might have, well, we've already got four junglers banned out. We might even have five if Misfits decide to take that Lee Sin off the cards, but it is going to be Jace here for Misfits Academy. So, whether we go Gragas as a first pick, Flex here for Schalke. I think that's probably the strongest draft potential when you look at jungle top, but there's other things that are open here right now. I think they might Schalke pick the Lulu. Go. I think they might yeah, pick the Lulu think... up here, Stress. I get that's that a good prediction. inclination. Of course, did ban it out in the uh, the first game, but this game, Vanda sitting on one of those utility supports for which he is well known. Well, right now you can flex the Gragas if you are Misfits. I think you pick up the Tom Kench as well for yourself. To, ah, actually, Tom Kench into Lulu, you probably don't want to do so much. Yeah. That's where they go. Ah, my dra this draft's been horrible so far in the prediction game for me. I think it's a little bit of a difficult one because <laughs> of the Rengar ban coming out from Schalke. It's going to be Karzik's Karma here for Misfits, so Dreams. Going back to that Karma, has played it quite a few times across the split, and yeah. Karzik's for Pride Stalker, still early game, still aggressive, it's what we wanted to see. It is, that's what we're talking about, is I think any other early game jungler can do that. Now you pair it with the Karma, which gives you um, generally, a pushing bot lane against Lulu is not necessarily so set in stone. Something like a Caitlyn alongside Lulu does a great job at pushing the lane out. We're getting towards, you know, the next rotation now. Lee Sin is locked in for Schalke because otherwise they would have lost that power jungler. And they are going to look towards the Elf, the Ezreal as well. Actually, Upset has played one game of Ezreal uh -huh. and had the highest damage anyone has ever done in this Challenger split on that Ezreal. Ever? Ever in this challenger split. <laughs> okay. Out of any any position, That's any fine. player, this Ezreal, he did over 800 damage a minute on the Ezreal. Did such a superb job on that. It's going to be the Ash counter pick for Misfits Academy. Yeah, and it's not so much a counter pick, but Ash is going to be able to push quickly with uh, this Kami. Gives you the utility. We saw Yuki. He did a good job with the arrows in the last game. Uh, Cos Q was kind of memeing again out Schalke by hovering near Kali. <laughs> Just so. pick it, man. Just, it's going to get banned this second rotation. Camille is the ban. Once again, we see those top laners left to last for both of these teams. And last game, actually, Jisoo did a superb job on that Rumble, known more for his tank top laners. He really put the pressure down onto Smithy Jack. Yeah, he had a pushing lane. Rengar comes up to his lane, gets them the kill early on, and it's quite easy from there when Misfits Academy only have a couple of times they have to fight. So Jisoo did a good job alongside Pride Stalker in getting them ahead. I like this Cassiopeia ban. Take it away. Now you've taken away two of the big components that Misfits Academy used in the last game to defeat you. I don't think it's enough to guarantee a win because Schalke needs some earlier game focus to come through here. While Oriana is a good ban against Selfie, I actually think Schalke are more likely to go somewhere towards an Ari or something like a Renekton up in the top lane. For Misfits to defend against that, they have to pick something that is blind pickable in either top or mid here, and then get the counter matchup for themselves as the last pick. Talia is still on the cards, of course. We saw that band out last time, and Misfits played it in their second game against Schalke two yeah. weeks ago, so that's always a possibility. Pretty safe in the mid lane We've as well. also seen a bunch of it out of Selfie. That's been another pick that uh, he's played. Gragas has snuck his way all yep. the way through, and it's a strong top lane. Jisoo played it twice last time these two teams met. Didn't work out too well because the Renekton was picked up by Schalke. Right, now I wonder whether Schalke are going to go that route here. If they pick a, a scaling mid laner like a Vlad or something like that, they can pick a Renekton and means they don't have three losing lanes. But uh, I wonder where we're going on this one. It's... If it's not Renekton in the top lane, it'll likely be that Nautilus again. But if you do go Nautilus here, it is a little difficult to get the ball rolling earlier on. I think because Smitty J has won the matchup into Jisoo on the Renekton Gragas before, I would not be surprised to see it picked once again here for Schalke. And it gives you pushing power, which is something we've always seen Schalke prioritize in their drafts. I'm just looking at things though, and Schalke are playing a very reactive style again. Like. Victor in the mid lane, Ezreal, Lulu. It 
you never kill Ezreal Lulu, but at the same time, generally having kill pressure and response in any situation is difficult too. And I think Misfits has ran this out here with some extra damage now from this mid lane role. And whether it's a Syndra, whether it is something like a Vlad for later in the game, can be either. So similar composition actually all around with that Syndra being locked in, you know, high damage in the mid lane, some power across the rest of the board, good mid game spikes. And as you said, Schalke looking perhaps further towards that late game and reactive play. Again, for the second game now in a row, I wonder whether Schalke feel like it was more execution based why they won the last game. There are some differences here with the Victor, with the Ezreal. This is less focused on Schalke trying to harass in the bottom lane with like the, the hook potential. Remember, they picked Thresh into Tom Kenshin yeah. in the last draft. This time, they've gone with that first pick, Lulu, headed against, uh, headed alongside an Ezreal. I want to come back to the Victor pick in the mid lane as well. Selfie, this will be his 14th competitive game on Victor, and he has a 77% win rate on that champion at the moment. Of course, it was in a meta where it was a lot stronger when he previously played it, but we talked a lot about comfort picks as we were yeah. analyzing that first game. This is a comfort pick for Selfie. It is. We've seen a bunch of Victor around the globe as well. Um, the most successful region still playing Victor is, as always, LCK. They, <laughs> but that's because they're, the way they play reactively is so good. Teams like SKT, KT, the best of the best of the best, are so good at playing into their opponent's mistakes, that, and that's what Victor allows you to do. Schalke in the last game, while they didn't really react too well to Misfits Academy's mistakes, they slowed the pace of the game down, and that is something Victor will allow them to do again. So. I do I do worry for the Schalke composition. I think Misfits Academy have enough to punish, but if Schalke play it out correctly, I think they can hang on for a late game win. They have to make the picks to punish. We are getting on to the second game of this best of five between Schalke Nullfear and Misfits Academy. Game one went to Misfits. Schalke will be trying to redeem themselves and get that Schalke tank back up and running. But it's a long road now. Need to win three of the next four if they are going to get through to that promotion tournament. It's very interesting. We were uh, talking a little bit with Prolly a couple of weeks ago about when you watch other regions and their compositions, is it worth going like, OK, now we just play like them. We pick the champions they play. We try and play like them. And a lot of the discussion we had, uh, not all of it made to broadcast, was to do with like the strength of players. And if a player is not good enough to like, understand with the rest of the team, exactly how to play that composition yeah. at the level it needs to be played, then it's not always worth going that way. Now we have a test for Schalke. This is a tough draft that they've got for themselves. I want to see, are these players strong enough to play a reactive style like this? Also a test for Misfits as well, though, because they will be in a situation that no one expected them to be, perhaps not even themselves, being 1-0 up over Schalke, and they have a composition that needs to make plays. They have to do stuff. Otherwise, they're going to get outscaled by the Victor, by the Ezreal. Lulu so powerful later on. Mm -hmm. Nautilus, an unkillable tank. Only Lulex really falls off out of this Schalke lineup. So if yeah. Misfits do not take that priority, if they do not take initiative and try and shut Schalke out of this game, as mm -hmm. they did in game one, they are going to lose late game. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, a little help on the start of this game for Pride Stalker from his jungle and uh, from his mid lane and top. I kind of look at this though and I'm like, I feel like the, the thought process that's gone into this draft is a little more similar to H2Ks than anything. And that, that kind of would tie into things with the fact that, you know, Be obviously veteran, works for veteran and Vanda and Lulex, I mean, different times for Lulex, but uh, I can't help shaking the feeling that probably would be like, okay, this is just a hard draft, but we know we can play it out if it was still H2K, and we criticize the H2K lineup for that. I feel like at this level, in a challenger playoff, if you a 10 and zero, you had been dominant in almost every single role, I feel like you just mix in an early game component, give one of your players a champion that can snowball so heavily, and as long as you don't all in the early game, yeah. surely that's like the, the way to go in my mind on that. That's where we've seen dominance, but then, nevertheless, we'll see whether it works for Schalke. Upset Look, going in. Ooh, it's going to be trades. ignited. Exhaust coming back onto Yuki. Upset's low. Yuki gets the shield from Dreams, but actually a trade that seems to have gone in favor of Misfits Academy there, just in terms of pure health. Yeah, Ignite traded for Exhaust. You can see Yuki was maybe a little late to that fight, but uh, now Lulex, maybe if he can find his attention down in the bottom side of the map. Maybe we'll see something go for Schalke, but certainly Schalke have to have it weighing on their minds that 
they've already had something happen to them that they were never anticipating. They would never have thought they were going one game down. Everything was about how cleanly they're going to make it to the LCS promotion tournament. They've been tweeting about that all week. And now they have to recover. Yep. Now they have to step up to the mark. Say, you have to stand up and be counted when it comes to points like this. And thus far, Pride Stalker and Misfits Academy have done exactly that. Schalke seems to be pushing in this bottom lane, which is slightly contradicting expectations when you ex look into the Ash and the Karma. Lulu is always deceptive on the amount of push. Because Glitter Lance has been nerfed so many times on the minion damage, the other thing you've got to look at is Upset has been throwing out a lot of Mystic shots at the wave. You get that passive from Lulu as well, so every time he autos, more autos come out and it's just damage down to the wave. A lot of people underestimate exactly how good Lulu is. There's a reason she used to be played with Caitlyn all the time. <laughs> it's push, 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 yeah. Lulu Caitlyn, Lulu Callista, Lulu Ezreal, Lulu Cogmore. So many powerful picks alongside that Lulu can do a lot of work. All for different reasons as exactly. well. Exactly, yeah. she is the pure utility support when it comes to just aiding your AD carry. When Price she's not being played mid. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Days gone by. Thankfully, she no longer gets played mid. I've used her to tear up the solo Q ranks recently. Yeah. She's, oh, she's so good. So so easy to play as well. But Schalke having a hard time playing into Misfits Academy early on. Lulex, though, looking for the invade. And this is something he's done so well across the split, is getting into the enemy jungler's face. And you can see he's trying to trade around Pride Soccer when there's the monster camp around him, the, the raptors, means he's not going to be isolated. So uh, normally, if Lee Sin walks into Kha'Zix in the jungle and Kha'Zix has a jump on him, you get the isolation damage, yeah. you get everything, and Kha'Zix tends to win that. It's only if Kha'Zix checks into Lee that it goes the other way, but you can see Lulex trying to get some damage down. But bot lane, heavy, heavy trade onto Vanda. Yeah, Vanda's low. Ignite's coming back off cooldown pretty soon for Dreams. Yeah. Of course, Exhaust will be back up as well. It's still heals and flashes all around, so neither team really in kill threat yet, but... Across the board, Misfits Academy showing up. And uh, especially Jisoo in this top lane. He was a, a weak link for them a couple of weeks ago. This week, he's looked a lot stronger. And I'm actually surprised to see them prioritizing the Gragas over the Nautilus, mm. considering how strong Nautilus has been for Jisoo over the last few years. But I think at that point, they are looking for some sense of disengage or engage at the same time. Like, Nautilus is good for that. Like, let's not beat around that. And uh, you can TP in from the side, get the flank, whether it's depth charge or that. but. Jisoo also provides a lot of disengage from this Gragas tool. Some wave clear comes from it as well. Like They're fairly similar champions overall, but Smitty J has to throw himself a little uh, <laughs> closer. You can disengage with Gragas from afar. I do want to touch on bot lane. Yeah. While we have seen a lot of trading in there. Sheen first out of upset for Ezreal. Focused more on trading. A lot of people still rush tier in lane. We have seen a couple of AD carries notably getting this Sheen. It just means that they're going to be able to do more damage and delay the uh, the Mana Mune Mura Mana exchange later on. It's more for this laning now. I did talk to a veteran about that a couple of weeks into the split because I saw it happening mm -hmm. time and time again when they picked the Ezreal veteran, of course, the coach of Schalke. And he was saying they like just that power spike. They like to have that little bit more damage in the lane that you were talking about. They like the fact that if Upset hits a Mystic Shot, the enemy takes a quarter of their health and that basically wins you the trade. It allows you to be a lot more aggressive as well, which is something mm -hmm. we have seen time and time again out of Upset and Vanda. And that's one of the things is without any sustain coming from this lane from Misfits Academy, if they've been chipped down, chunked down in lane so that they can't all in, then Schalke can comfortably take this laning phase, but it is uh, back and forth. It's the push potential going in favor of Schalke, but the CS lead is in favor of Misfits after those first few exchanges in the lane. And Yuki going back and getting himself a BF sword would help him with those trades as well, if they can oh, perhaps yes. catch someone out with those Karma chains. Mid lane's been a little bit quieter. Koskou does have a CS lead for himself and actually is roaming up and down the river trying to spot perhaps if he can get a gank off somewhere. There is a control ward down that will spot him quite late on here. Yeah, it's early enough. You've got an Ezreal and a Lulu. You can use that a Whimsy if you need to. That's just the power of Lulu. Like You can Whimsy, it gives an attack speed buff and a movement speed buff or gets an enemy out of the fight for the next few seconds. You've got help picks, you've got the shield, you've got the wild growth, you've got the glitter lance. What more can a man want from the support? you got everything from Lulu. And uh, push potential to go alongside it. 
difficult to play around. We've seen it rise through the ranks here in competitive. Challenger have actually been banning it out the entire split long, which was weird. We got into like week two and every game had a Lulu ban and we, everybody was looking at it thinking, no, she's not that strong yet. And EU, then EU everywhere Challenger else is banning him. EU Challenger is the meta-defining region. I think you need to realize <laughs> this. Casters have known it for a very long time, yeah. Stress. We have had a couple of picks rise through the ranks. Sartorius was playing Gragas top before yep. it was cool. Um, for like a year before it was good. Um, just you wait, just you wait. Next up's going to be Akali Akali bands, mid. Yeah, the blue side of Kali bans every single game. Bryce Silka trying to invade a little bit here. Does have a slight advantage in terms of CS, but that can be deceptive with the Krugs, of course, giving you quite a lot. So if Lulex mm -hmm. hadn't taken Krugs, I'm not sure how far ahead he actually is in experience. Cause you coming across Unleashed Power used. Lulex will just jump away. So Lulex is about a quarter of a level up. So it's not a huge lead, but less substantial than usual. Arrow's going to come out upset. He's going to be able to dodge off towards the side of this one. In just, just a second, about, I was looking at the is. one monster. There's the arrow. My apologies, guys. I turned into Nastradamus there for a second, being able to predict the future. Giving away secrets. Upset right now. It's difficult. I, again, like Ezreal Lulu, right? Is like the shields. You got Arcane Shift. You got Flash. Now not available for both of them. We'll see if Vanda flashes to save Upset's life in this game. You <laughs> never know. You never know. It might happen. He doesn't really need to, though. That's no, the thing He's now. got everything else that can keep him alive. Now that he's hit six, you've got that world growth. You've got the strength. Yuki and Dreams are starting to push this one back, but perhaps it is more Shalka allowing them to push it forward because Lulex was coming around for the gank. Wasn't quite going to be able to connect. And actually, across the board, CS leads here for Misfits. They've taken a 400 gold lead, which isn't, you know, huge, but is enough early on. It is. It's more of the same, right? Like last game was very similar. Koski, you have to expect, will have the lead over Selfie in the early onset of the laning phase. Jisoo has done a good job, but here Lulex comes Lulex. Kicks in. Chaos Storm comes down. Oh. Koski's going to try and escape. Does use the ghost. Is able to get away for the time being. Of course, no unleashed power for him. He used it earlier on. No flash as well. Already used that one. Jisoo's going to come across and actually Koski's going to escape. Great play by him to walk his way through the jungle. Oh, However, yet. He's perhaps He's gone the wrong way. Back. Selfie has Barrier knocked back. Death Ooh. Ray is not enough damage to take out Syndra. And now this is Misfits Academy making the counter play and nice going response. for the Dragon. Nice response. Ooh, Ooh. nearly, nearly gets it. Uh, Misfits Academy kind of wasting Shalka's time and taking a Dragon for themselves. That's an Infernal Drake to start this game off. And keep in mind, Shalka once again are playing a composition that needs a lot of time. This is a best of five. This is game two. If game two goes the way game one does, Misfits Academy will be 2-0 up in this series, and it looks to be starting that way. Smitty J just let Jisoo go all the way through mid lane. Depshaw's going to knock him up, and Dredgemite's going to pull him back, and Jisoo's going to die. <laughs> First blood, Shao Kahn on fit. Oh, I would love to hear the conversation between Smitty J and Selfie there. Smitty J stood recalling. Gragas body slams past, and uh, Jisoo dies. Not exactly the greatest setup. I think Jisoo wasn't expecting Smitty J to be there. He'll be slightly frustrated oh, with it as well. Lulex Careful. is looking for Cos Q. Does land the kick, does get the kill. Price Soccer is stalking down his prey and will take one in response. 2 1, Schalke. 2 1 for Schalke. A little bit messy mid lane play here. That <laughs> Back and forth. Like Lulex knows he can kill Cos Q because there's no flash available, but it's a one way trip for him. So it is even on the gold right now, thanks to that first blood. See, this is the power of having the Sheen early. You know, look at the damage going down mm -hmm. on Surprise Talk, especially since he's a relatively squishy jungler. You can force him out. We're going to see Watch that play this. in the mid lane once again. <laughs> Jisoo avoids Smitty J. That is... He uh, missed the uh, Flash Body Slam as well. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But that that's the sort of moment that can happen on stage, and Misfits Academy now need to react to that and say, look, we made a misplay. We need to get back into this. We need to keep our heads head high. We are still ahead, albeit very very small amounts ahead of Schalke Nullfear. We have the Infernal Drake, we have CS leads. Schalke showed us how they can play patiently, uh, play patiently from behind last game. Here, Misfits Academy need to understand that they're still ahead. Yeah, Misfits are for now uh, still ahead. The difficulty is Selfie is going to come online a little earlier on in this game um, than in the previous game. Victor. Once you get that perfect hex core and one or two items alongside, you just wave clear for days. Yeah. Like, it's not a whole lot that uh, Koski can do about it, especially the fact that he's got Mercury Treads now. Just neutralizes a lot of the damage, reduces the stun duration. Like, everything that you need against the Syndra comes from those Mercury Treads. So, uh, we'll keep our eyes mid lane, but 
if Schalke don't lose their mid tower before 30 minutes, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a bit like having the zigs there as well, just for the wave clear. Very easy for you to push back your opposition. Schalke. Ziggs is even easier though. Because yeah. Ziggs you can affect the other lane too. You just alt bot or top if it's getting pushed in. Victor Victor takes nuanced play. Because oh, yes. if the rest of your team messes up on the other side and you're just sat mid lane, you're not going to be sat mid lane for much longer. You're going to get dove. Uh, whereas Ziggs kind of shuts out a lot of the uh, entry points in the jungle vision control. Uh, speaking of dive, Lulex and Sophie were looking down towards this bottom lane. However, they're going to back their way away when they realize Koskyu and Firesook were in the uh, blue buff, taking that one down. It's been a slow start to the game. We saw this in the first game as well. Actually, Schalke now perhaps looking to get back into it. Upset has been caught out slightly here. The arrow comes down and Upset takes it to the face. Oh. Exhaust down, wild growth used as well. Here's Lulex trying to join the party. Yuki flashes in, but can't quite get the kill. Kick back, Yuki dead. Lulex takes him out. Dreams now off towards the side, but Koskyu and Bridesorka have got here in time. Bridesorka sinks down the claws and takes down Upset. And now Lulex is in the wrong neighborhood. He's caught in the river as Jisoo's caught in the top lane. Lulex going to try and escape, but you cannot get away when Koskyu latches on another kill for misfits two for two overall schalke winning on the top side misfits winning on the bottom side there is no real push to be had here as selfie is going to return to that mid lane and clear it out in time he knows there's no ultimate from coscu selfie doesn't have his either but that barrier is available too so we get a bit of a neutralized moment of play even trades across the board and we end up in a situation where both teams go back to neutralizing any kind of push. However, stress, and this is a huge, massive, gigantic, gargantuan point. I'm ready. Is it almost as tall as you look in comparison to me? <laughs> the gold lead is now in Schalke's favor by 200 <gasps> whole gold. Let's have a look at this top lane kill <laughs> once again. This is an easy one as Selfie just walks right into the top lane while the bot exchange was going on and picks up a kill. Cuts in through the tri-bush, and this was Lulex dying at the end of it. What mechanics? Koscu presses R. Hey. Gets the kill. The amount of times I've missed the R key when I've tried to use my ultimate is uh, <laughs> embarrassing, to say the least. But yes, that is the power of Syndra. You can, if you get someone out, if you get a couple of spheres down on the ground, you can isolate someone and just take them out of the fight. That's the reason we've got wild growth. That's the reason we've got help picks. It's the reason you've got the siphon power shield for Selfie as well. They are looking to protect themselves from this Syndra burst. They are indeed upset. Got so many ultimates in the last exchange. Still couldn't quite stay alive when Pride Stalker jumped down into that bot lane. But Schalke, this is a better reaction than we saw in game one. However, they haven't fallen as far behind as they did in game one. They've Very actually true. been able to take reactive plays off it. Upset taken down quite low once again. And I actually want to talk about his itemization here because mm -hmm. earlier on we said Sheen first isn't the, the weirdest thing in the world, but here he's decided to get the phage before completing that mana me. Yeah, I, I, I know he got the pickaxe earlier on, looking for that Trinity Force over that mana mune. And Lulex wants to come in, trying to run head first into the lane, kicks Yuki. Arrow comes out, Yuki's low, but here's Pride Stalker trying to join the fray. Yuki's dead, Pride Stalker gets one, looking for two with Vanda there in the front line. Help pick shield is not gonna be enough. Pride Stalker gets the double, and now Lulex, isolated, jumps away, does escape. The re engage coming out because Selfie is looking for the flank. Gonna see if he can get onto Dreams, the Chaos Storm, the Siphon Power, the Empowered Auto Attack is not quite enough, but the Chaos Storm is another kill for Selfie. TP used actually here. Here because Jisoo has joined the fight from the backside. Selfie knocked back towards the tower. Depth charge down. Selfie's low. Unleashed power comes down and Koscu will snipe away the enemy mid lane. And Lulex jumps back in. Shalka not done yet. Koscu maybe though. No. Oh. He flashes in. He gets the double. And now Smitty J is going to go down as well. It's a triple for Koscu. It's all gone wrong for Shalka. They can't clean the back end up of the fight. Uh, and Lulex went so aggressive into that lane, jumping in, flashing behind Yuki. The kick alone is good, but the problem is, look at how much he had to use the setup. Didn't have the quick damage to end this fight. If that initial Q had hit Yuki, Schalke would be in and out without any kind of reaction from Misfits, but Misfits had brought Pride Stalker down to this already. 
Both of the bot lane pairing had died from Schalke, and then they re-engage again without the right setup from Lulex. Selfie manages to get the kill on the support, but overextends so far. They don't react to the teleport until Smitty J starts TPing in late. Selfie easily blasted back towards the tower, and from there, 3v3 looks okay, but down goes the damage. Lulex only has Warrior Enchant and a Giant Spell right now, and they cannot trade against Coscu. Smitty J leaves Lulex for dead trying to get the kill and now selfies 1v2 he's caught out by g2 and prize stalker and prize stalker is unstoppable that last gank he counted it perfectly as lulex went in was in the right place at the right time and now he is five and oh on this card we said he needed to show up and that is exactly what he's done yeah this guy is making a name for himself in his first time playing offline oh, oh, oh. Ooh, oh, G2 comes in. can't quite get it lulex now caught out g2 might continue to tank this one up the arrow doesn't quite connect Schalke are forced back once again by Misfits and Academy. Again, a greedy draft out of Schalke, and they are taking fights too early in game two. Game one, it was that they weren't scaling fast enough. Game two is that they're trying to force plays, and Misfits Academy are just reacting way better than Schalke are. And this has gone so well in favor of Misfits Academy for the second game in a row. Everything everything for the last two months has been about how dominant Schalke is. Everybody has said it. And right now, they're with their backs against the wall and they're going to be close from being at match point against this Misfits Academy lineup. All right, once again, we're 20 minutes in and they're 4,000 gold behind. Only three or four times across the entirety of Challenger Series and the LCS have we seen a team win after being 4,000 gold behind. And in both the games today against Misfits Academy, Schalke are at a deficit early on. It's uh, a lot to do with risky drafts and a lot to do with Misfits Academy giving Schalke everything they can. Coming into this, we had the discussion of Misfits Academy trying to replicate some of the success for, that their sister team, Misfits, have been having sat currently at the second spot in Group A of the LCS, only behind G2 in Group A. Well, Misfits Academy looked like they must have got some pointers, some time with the uh, Misfits lineup here because they are looking a lot better than they did in the regular split. It's what, two weeks of good boot camp and good yeah. practice and prioritizing what you want to do as well because up until we started the games today, when we talked about Misfits Academy beating Schalke, Firstly, it had been a pipe dream to some respect, people not expecting it to happen. And secondly, we said they'll draw them down into the dirt, you know, they'll get yeah. messy team fights, they'll try and fight around Baron, they'll try and fight around those big neutral objectives. That's not what Misfits has done a lot of the time. They played around objectives, they played around vision, and when Schalke have taken an overstep in a fight, Misfits have capitalized. Yeah, only in the last five or so minutes has it become a lot more scrappy and a lot more of an open game between these two teams. But look at this, this is exactly Setting what I'm talking the about. They get vision control in the river, yeah. and then they set up the top tower. The arrow is there, Coscu is there with threat behind the tower as well. Misfits Academy move in, take it down, and look, Schalke are so slow on the response here that they want to get mid lane, but with this Karma, the Cloud Drake they've got as well, Misfits Academy should be able to react uh, in time to clean up the back end of this, I didn't realize just quite how low Schalke had got the tower already. So Schalke, actually, it is a good reaction. Um, Misfits slower on that than I thought so. But look at the comparison. At 15 minutes, these teams were even in gold. And now there's a 5,000 gold lead for Misfits Academy. They have accelerated from that bot lane fight and just started to take advantage after advantage. The question becomes, with this mid-game spiking team, with the power they have at the moment, will Misfits be able to take enough that they break through the armor of that Schalke tank? I think it, it's so significant that that mid-tower just fell in favor of Schalke. I think if Misfits had been able to hold that mid-tower uh, for much longer, it would have made it so Schalke a uh, very difficult situation to react. Why is that? What what makes it so impactful that a mid tower goes so down? So you can see all the wards that Misfits have got around mid lane. Uh, the control ward that sat there where the tower used to be and the three or four that are around the jungle entrances. Misfits would have been able to fight over every single one of these wards without having to worry because that mid tower stands behind them. It's not possible for Schalke to come in on the flank. 
if the tower's not there, Schalke now can force Misfits into areas where they don't have secure vision, and maybe a TP ward sits behind Misfits, they bring Smitty J in, and it opens up the fights around mid lane. It's something that a lot of teams, or at least a lot of viewers, will overlook and just think, oh, it's just the gold goes over, right? But it's so much more about control around this mid lane. Look at how Schalke, the first time in, have to now face check and throw out skill shots at every single bush. Now they establish vision control. The next time they do this, it shouldn't quite, uh, it shouldn't be quite so uh, difficult to do. So if there was a tower there, that would be so much more difficult because Misfits could take the fight and then retreat back towards the tower if they needed to. Yeah, or at least not have to worry about somebody coming in behind them exactly Lex. like this. Here comes the TP. Lulex takes the arrow, ignited as well, tries to kick onto Jisoo. Whimsy used. Vanda caught out though and melted away. Smitty J, the new target, but Koskyu up towards the side will get shut down by the Nautilus. Ooh. Yuki dead as well as Schalke start to turn the fight on its head. Upset still alive. Lulex caught off towards the side, but he might be the one doing the catching. Tries to jump towards onto Jisoo. Not quite going to be able to connect. Misfits Academy lose two. Look like executional errors out of Misfits Academy. The start to the fight was good. Kept trying to get Lulex. Here comes Pride Stalker from the backside. This fight isn't done. We'll recap it in a second. Clears out the wave and Dreams jumps onto Selfie. There comes the gravity well, though. Jisoo's going to jump in. Selfie onto Dreams. Will get the kill. Pride Stalker going to try and take him off towards the side. Gets him down. Upsets low. Lulex too. Pride Stalker looking for the resets. Gets the double. Now it's going to take out Smitty J as well. Pride Stalker takes a triple. We're only two games in and Pride Stalker has almost certainly secured a player of the series vote if this series Ooh. ends on three games. Lulex running for the hills. You can see just how well Pride Stalker is playing in this series and I am impressed at his Kha'Zix and his Renga. This whole passage of play was Misfits Academy starting out the gank. Are they really going to go for this? They have isolation Lulex damage, is so low. I don't think they've actually spotted this ward. Yeah. Pride Stalker walked into the pit without spotting it. Pride Stalker is going to go chunk him down. very low. Can heal up, of course, off the void spikes, but Lulex is here. Arrow oh. onto him! Lulex, even with the world growth, is now dead, and Misfits Academy will try and stop the band from resetting. It does completely reset. Dreams is here now, has yeah, that get Mantra shields. Inspire. It's up to Vanda. If Vanda can they do can anything jungle. here, We've, no. see, we've seen Hillasang steal. No, 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 Misfits have got this. Like, they just juggle the aggro very effectively, unlimited. Obviously very happy right now with how Misfits Academy are playing. You cannot understate how clean this team have looked. And from what looked initially, initially like an executional error, the TP is good here. Misfits Academy start the fight, they get Lulex. I want to see how close Upset and Selfie are, uh, sorry, Yuki, and uh, CosQ are standing in this Chaos Storm here because Chaos Storm goes down, damage comes through. Yuki then gets Lulex, and it's Lulex that gets a lot of that damage down. And from there, Misfits Academy don't really have a way of taking the rest of this fight. So you can see Schalke very confident in actually continuing this one. From there, we had the triple kill for Pride Stalker. And now Misfits Academy want to get an Ocean Drake on top of this. They've got so many objectives this entire series. Exactly. Like, they've taken more towers than they did in this game already. Uh, well, almost more towers than they did across the entire last time they played Schalke and in that best of two. They've taken three, they only got four last time. Last game, they got an, a, mass, a massive amount. Schalke have only taken one. Misfits have got both the first towers. This is just incredible play by Misfits. And I know sometimes it sounds like we are, you know, playing them down a little bit, sounding surprised that their macro has been as good as it has. But mm -hmm. watching them for the previous five weeks of Challenger series, this is an entirely new team. It absolutely is. It looks like a much stronger lineup than we had seen in the previous weeks. And part of that list is some personal growth here in uh, the way that Pride Stalk has been playing. He had a good split, but this was the, the team that came forth narrowly, narrowly came forth on that last day of play because of the results of the other series allowed Pride Stalker and the rest of Misfits to secure their spot. Yuki is a veteran of Challenger Series, as is Kozku. It's hard, it's hard to say that they should have been favored. Coming into this upset just gets caught. So much damage onto him. And of course, because the wild growth is used on Lulex, Dreams goes low, does get taken out by Selfie. So it actually is a one for zero trade. But coming back to your point, Misfits Academy only won one series in the Challenger series. They got two ties, which got them into that fourth spot. Mm. And they lost two series as well. They are just 
so different to the team we Shizu saw a while ago. Flank. He's got his ult. The ah. ult does come out, doesn't quite knock Selfie back, but Pride Stalker doesn't really care. Kicked away by Lulex. They're looking for this tower, and this is the second tier turret taken out. The dredge line doesn't connect from Smitty from the side, and that means Schalke cannot re-engage. Even in a 4v5, Misfits Academy are able to take down the tower. They are still quite slow, even with the Baron buff, though. This is one thing we're seeing from both games, is there are a lot of opportunities for Schalke to drag this game longer, and... <laughs> This is going to sound like a mimic of the last game. It is a mimic of the last it's game. It's a composition that Schalke have that will do better later on in the game. That's not an excuse for them to start making mistakes because Misfits have shown they will end these games yeah. if there are mistakes made. And it, Schalke, it, as, as much as I agree with you, yeah. it's a late game composition. We've seen Schalke win in 25 minutes with a yeah, late game have. composition before. We have. This is just Misfits Academy playing their comp incredibly well and understanding how to outplay Schalke at times. Even here where Schalke are trying to perhaps set up a flank on Jisoo, you can see already Koskyu's reacting and saying, no, we're not yeah. going to let you get these easy kills. And <laughs> Koskyu steals away the blue. Five and three, Victor. You have to respect in team fights, though. That is one thing. Oh, upset. Wild growth oh. just enough to keep upset alive. Doesn't burn the flash, does burn the heal, though. And Unleashed Power will be back off cooldown in about 100 seconds or so. Jisoo coming in on to Smitty J. Not he's not here yet. Here's the arrow. Doesn't quite connect to Smitty. Wasn't quite there. Redemption used by Misfits. The Inspire comes it's out as well. 3v5. They're just going for it. They're continuing to push in. Smitty has to flash at the end. That's your tank. Flashing away. Why is Schalke trying to start that fight early? I can understand they want to try and punish the flash being down from Syndra, but look at how low the rest of the team is. Upset is barely now back with the team, but again, it's 3v5. Don't take the numbers disadvantage on the fight selfie gets stunned once again caught out and no wild go through a little while still this is all misfits need to do keep setting up selfie TV flashes in through. to the oh, midst no. of the team doesn't survive as koskyu takes him down and now lulex the target he's dead as well even with the tp schalke seem to have lost this fight already smitty j caught in the midst of four members of misfits can do nothing four members of schalke die misfits lose no one S Schalke and Selfie have been trying to force these fights and it is not working for them. They have picked a greedy composition for the second game in a row and this time they are losing on any kind of standing when you look at how they're composing themselves for this. Misfits Academy will crack the inhibitor here. Still 20 seconds on Selfie. It's not enough to win the game on its own, but Misfits Academy are, are looking like they're about to take this second game. Breaking this inhibitor is huge. Infernal Drake up in just two minutes. It will be Misfit's fourth dragon of the game if they take it. And they have taken so much from Schalke. Why are you taking this fight? Look at how Smitty J has already lost all of his health. And then Schalke are standing close enough to an inner tower. And Selfie jumps in thinking he can get the exchange down onto that AD carry. Selfie doesn't have Lich Bane. He's not running one shot Victor. He's running Abyssal Scepter, Zonia's that isn't enough to straight up kill that AD carry who has heal, who has a karma, has shields all the way through this. Yuki just flashed out and survived. We talked about how the emotional game must have been playing on Misfits' minds. How much more must it be playing on Schalke's now? Up, you can you can forgive losing one game. Like in your mind, you can say, okay, we you know we weren't quite warmed up, we weren't quite stage ready. But now this is the second game. This is a deciding yeah. game as well because you have to 3-0 if you lose this. Miss, uh, Schalke will be thinking to themselves, what, what's gone wrong? And now you go from, it's not just Rengar. Clearly, it is more than just one pick for Misfits Academy. Smitty J is dead. Dead? Dreams um, just get Why him. are they pushed out in mid lane right now? You have no vision control. This is basic League of Legends. If you do not have vision on an area and you are this far down, do not move there. And Schalke are going to get pushed in because of it. But this is something we've seen Schalke do so well throughout the split. Yeah. The basics of the mechanics of the macro play. And when they've got onto the stage today, Misfits Academy are just beating them at their own game. They have done what Upset. Schalke do better. He's and what dead. they do is they take down kills. Upset goes out by Zorka just zoning away the rest of Schalke Null Fear. And Misfits Academy with five members can look to end this game. The redemption will heal them up. And Schalke might not have a leg to stand on. Schalke can't defend with just Selfie here. Bryce Stalker exhausted, they're going for the Nexus Tower, split focus, Lulex jumps in, He's but dead. Koskyu takes him down, he's on a rampage, the first Nexus Tower will fall as Misfits continue their pressure forward, they have pushed back the Schalke tank, and they're going to take out the second Nexus in this best of five, it's Misfits Academy 2 and 0. Oh. Convincing second game against Schalke, 
and what has been dominant form up against near disrespect from this Schalke lineup. Two drafts back to back that have just been punished by Misfits Academy, a play style that has not respected Misfits Academy's lead, and we're 2-0 match point. Misfits Academy are looking unstoppable. And you can see the devastation as well on the Schalke team's faces. They did not expect to be in this situation. They, they haven't played exceptionally well, but a lot of it has just been Misfits playing better. Misfits have just yeah. outplayed Schalke 0 Fear, which is something that before the game started today, I really did not expect to be saying. Not at all. Like, and I don't mean any disrespect ourselves to Misfits Academy, but the undefeated rank one regular split team that, okay, they fell behind a little bit, but it always looked like they were playing with their food. They were ahead. Yeah. They ended up get, you know, ending games so quickly. And now they are at match point. One more loss shuts out Schalke's hopes. Everything that the, the team and the organization has talked about over the last six months since getting relegated out of the LCS, the the practice structure, the you know high ticket player names yeah. that came out of straight out of the World Championships, everything is one game away from going back to Challenger and not meeting their goal of going to the LCS this split. And I think if you're Schalke, you have to do what we talked about before game one. You know, Vander said, we have discipline as a team. We mm -hmm. know what we're going to do. We play well. We play our macro. We play our strategy. That's what Schalke need to do. Because yeah. although, I mean, both of these drafts, the strategy has been a little bit off. I think in both of our opinions, they played a little bit too late. You change that for this next game and you say, look, we can win. We can beat this team. We've yeah. done it twice a couple of weeks ago. Let's just play our style once again and beat this team. And it's not even like Misfits Academy are doing something we're not seeing other teams do, yeah. right? It, they're not coming out with anything that's surprising or difficult exactly to, to draft to predict, against. Yeah. Right, exactly. They're, they're playing mostly on meta stuff um, and uh, executing it very well. I mean, 9-0 Kha'Zix in this game, 9-2 Syndra, and you, <laughs> you draft Victor Ezreal and you're like, okay, we're just going to not win any lane and then we're just going to try and fight you. And that doesn't work if you give the advantage over. I think there's a an addendum to the, your point saying that Misfits Academy aren't doing anything we haven't seen do, uh, seen teams do. It's nothing we haven't seen LCS teams do. That's This that's is something true. we have not seen from other challenger teams apart from Schalke this split. So yeah. uh, Misfits Academy have definitely taken these two weeks and really stepped up their game. Pride Stalker especially. Both these games, he has been the dominant force that has pushed Misfits Academy towards these yeah. wins. It's like a lot of players uh, get nervous their first time on stage. Pride Stalker is like, okay, this is where I'm going to be home. super comfortable. This seems to be yeah. his home at the moment. Well, while the players get ready for game three, we're going to take a quick break. We'll get back into picks and bands when we return. <laughs> 